struggling with your finances? Struggling at work? With your social life? Or with your spiritual life? We invite you to join us on our family table talk every Saturday at 7.30 a.m. on my TV. Or catch us on our Facebook page. Bulaminaka, greetings uh, this wonderful morning, Saturday, uh, 7.30. Uh, normally, we are speaking on family uh, table talk. It's an uh, honor, it's a privilege, yeah. humbling experience yeah. to yeah. serve yeah. you this morning. Uh, those of you that are listening from our villages. We can take the barmo to many people who are in the village. We can take the barmo to many people who are in the village. We can take I can't get that to a non da bono lomano viti and a matakanis and indai. Sematico my and my television and a screen levels and a wireless platform say a Facebook. Sa Kero Bambula Tugani, Bayana Tugani, and Matakanis and indai. Bulaminaga we can only bully to Doko, Oklasa, my Tigabuna Noa, non the Serekil of Rambaki, Bambula Tugani, Binawalibuna Gravitavi, my Zabon Don Embaki, and my Sivita Tal. And family table talk seven thirty and we mataka ni singa bagaruai bulet to and a library say and the replay talent so na and my television bagambula to gani kego sekai sarwa bagandua na program go rosa bagambula bagayanda to gani Sinu, we are going to follow the Sarsa. Greetings to those of you that are. Thank you so much for believing this. But I can uh, better or improve our. All of you out there in the villages and in the Fiji Islands and also outside Fiji. Uh, for those of you we get yeah. to meet saying that you're all uh, to those of you in New Zealand in just uh, taking the time to one out of the number uh, in our viewership and we would like to say today thank you so much and also in australia as and when we do come uh, meeting up at the other shopping mall uh, and all the eatery place thank you as well we may not have we would like to see in canada all the way in Manitoba. And also to a uh, uh, big, vast area of the States of America. Yeah. Uh, we met people all the way from uh, Sacramento to uh, uh, San Rafael to um, Santa, Santa Rosa, Rosa and also Bay to the Bay at uh, this time to say in Bulavinaka. And, and thank you for tuning in and yeah. family. And I know you're tuning in also this morning. Then you love your one good beautiful children. Uh, thank you. Programs they are all and not only that, it didn't stop there, but also uh, support and uh, sponsor. 
uh, most of our people and most of the zones uh, here in Fiji, especially in Kandavo, we would like to make a mention and say thank you so much uh, for your support. To the um, our family that always follow from South Island, we have uh, over uh, England. Uh, thank Perisia uh, came and introduced herself, and I'm, I'm trying to think, okay, where have I met her before? And the way she was talking to me, it's like she's met me before, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, did I miss anything? And uh, right towards the end of our conversation, uh, that I've back to England uh, on the week, and uh, from uh, Europe, we may not um, have the open like uh, to the family table talk, to the little advices, little counsel, or little um, yeah discussion that is we have. Like what we always say, we are not perfect. It's not that we're having this uh, our program telling everybody that we are the perfect family. No, we are not. Uh, we have uh, shuffles just like you. Better than yours. About ours, then it gives. your church or do not have those kind of uh, have, um, that with you uh, they can yeah. talk yeah we will take this time to welcome it's the uh, we take this time to say Bulaminaka all the way from Turek in Suva. Not forgetting all the rugby boys that you are there in yeah. Europe. Time to say Bulaminaka. Yeah, and the only is through some program like this on Family Table Talk all the way from Fiji. So greet, greetings uh, from uh, Fiji. Good morning here in Suba. Uh, that I uh, the next there's a cyclone uh, just originate uh, near Solomon Island yeah, and it's moving uh, uh, moving to Australia that means moving westward uh, at the moment and uh, we are hoping to have a wonderful uh, the end of the year and those of you that are uh, preparing to go and sell Well, we have been talking towards the end of the year. There is all money that we always receive towards the year. Previous that comes along the way that you know, and, you know, put out another reminder to um, to us. Write down your list when you do. Uh, write your list. You will be guided uh, by what you have written and be reminded by what you've written. If you don't write down anything, then yeah. your money. You are just using the money anyhow because it's no guideline. But when you write it down, then you will see, uh, say, like, if you, if you, um, and if you don't, are there $200 too, then the $200 will come and evaporate in the air like you never received it, like you never had it. But if you write it down and you say, okay, I'm going to clear this, I'm going to do this, 
So find the time this week or find the time this weekend or next week. Uh, write down the realities of your finances. What are your current? What are your pending? If you still have your rent to, uh, needs to be cleared or uh, you still owe money to some people that you need uh, to pay and whatever that you're owing, write it down. Because when you don't write it down, then you don't know the total of money that you owe and you're always thinking that you don't owe as much. But when you write it down and you total it, then you realize, boy, this is the kind of money that I need to, to save or to pay back. Only when you write it down and you see the total, then you are convicted that it's quite a fair bit of money, which means whatever comes is not available and free for you to use it anyhow, but to be channeled to all these areas. So, write down. Yeah. And there are some bills that you cannot run away from it. It's like it will follow you. Yeah. Whether you hide or you jump or you whatever it should do, oh, it will follow you. Place. That bills will follow yeah. you. You can't get rid of it. And th that's a shelter, you know, the basic needs, eh? the necessities of life. And uh, your water bills, uh, your electricity bills for those of you uh, in the urban areas. And uh, yeah, those are the bills that follow you. So write it down. If you owe them, then you write it down. So when you list them down, like your pending and uh, what is projected for December, don't, don't uh, you know, uh, rule out December, write down December. Remember, all other months you have your money coming in and it goes straight to where it's supposed to, to go. December is quite different because you have uh, your family, you have your friends, it's a festive season. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's there, you cannot change that. And your money in December, it's very challenging because the same money you've been receiving every month You've been religiously just paying what needs to be paid and buying what needs to be bought. But when it comes to December, it's a bit uh, of a disarray, which means you may not have the full control of your finances and your priority may change. Uh, your rent and your water and your electricity used to be a priority normal for the last few months. But when it comes to December, it no longer becomes a priority because you prioritize your family gathering, you prioritize I mean, it's, it, it still has its importance, but at the end of the day, you are the only person that will be contributing here and also contributing here. If you contribute to less here, well, maybe they will say, Oh, maybe that person always talk too much, but never contribute as much. Well, that's, what, that's a flag. You cop when you do that. But for your rent and all these things, yeah. no one is going to help you here. No. This is the only, I mean, you are accountable uh, for your family, uh, for their shelter, and also for their basic uh, needs. And so those are the things that you need to, you know, prioritize and value, which is very important for you to write it down. So after you write all these things down, then you project. Don't wait for the money to come in. You project, meaning if I'm getting my pay, how much? What is my actual pay? If I'm getting weekly, what is my actual? If I'm getting fortnightly, what is my actual pay? If I'm getting monthly, what is my, you know, the amount that I get? So project the money that you're getting and have this list that are already written and plan on how that money comes in yeah. and what is the importance, which means you've written what you're owing, which is your arrears or pending. You've written what you need that is projected for the month of December. And on top of these basic things that you cannot run away from, then you have your family, your children that are supposedly going back to school next year. On which level? On which year? Uh, what is required of them? I know, you know, the Ministry of Education, and we must thank the, the Minister of Education, you know, just ruling out no levies, no, uh, as much as possible, the government is helping us to try and send all our children to school. And not only that, it becomes a, a big help to your, you know, to your budget, because you know, okay, you know, they're good. And, and it feels good because not as much of the money that we used to put aside for children going back to school. No, it's not as much because the government assistance is very good here in Fiji I'm talking about. Well, with that said, then you need to note down all those things. So when your money that you're com the money that you project coming in, it's like your, your, your budgeting, eh? your planning, your budget. The money that come in, then you'll see. If you are selling items, if you have a market store, or if you're in the flea market, or if you have a small business, 
what kind of money you know you can project that is coming your way. And those are the money that you can have as the fundamental basis, which means don't overthink it for you to think, okay, that can happen, that can happen. You will know when your business boost, you know when you drive. Because if you have, if you have a business, uh, you can control the money that come to you, then after writing down all that, then it becomes a motive in your heart to say, well, this is the amount that I owe and the amount that I need to pay that are in arrears, and this is what I need to have in December, and also, write down the budget of your family gathering. Or what are the costs that you're going to incur? Uh, which means uh, maybe in the rental car, maybe the fuel for that rental car, or if you're going in the bus, what are the bus fares? So you can calculate the Kenya. Kenya <laughs> Clear. So not the now. If I don't know so much, me kaku ni kau lebi na sabu sa na nomdo bali. So clear taka na November. Na December iko kila. Na ngono iko gele wa waki tuko kena na singi sudi kule maroti ko. Iko sabadi ngo ni ko kila that your bills for December is done. You know wherever you go and you know that money is not going to come come in because it's a festive season. Um, pay up your bills. So when you go, you know you are ready to come back and start uh, the month of uh, January 2024 in another new year because you know. You have closed 2023, even though you are still in yeah. 2023. Yeah. yeah. So those are the things that you need to, you know, itemize, write it down, and start thinking about it now. Don't wait until the money come in. I guarantee. You want to go send any volatile? So you know, even if you're left with $10 or $20, and you know you've cleared your debts, um, you've paid for the month of December, you have enough money to go buy for Christmas, and you have about $10 or $20, good enough. That's good enough. And for those of you who are Christians and believe in God, well, pray with faith that's going to work out. With that $10, it's amazing on how it can work out. So for you to exercise wisdom in every step of the way, uh, for you to think and think again, ask yourself whether this is correct, whether I can do this, whether this is the right way of doing it. You know, don't just out of the moment, spur of the moment for you to do things because it's either you lose a, you know, a, a substantial amount of money or you go uh, without being accountable or paying up the things that you can afford uh, to clear, and then yet you miss the opportunity to do so. Yeah, for, for those of us uh, that uh, we don't write, it's just like going to the shop when you don't have a shopping list. You start to buy things that uh, you don't need. You don't really need. Uh. And by the yeah. time you arrive home, you bought everything that you want and nothing that you need. Yes. And that's why it's very important for us yeah. to write down uh, as uh, Randini is saying of uh, that's just a budgeting. And most of the time, we are challenges with few things. Yeah. Number one, the atmosphere. Eh? The atmosphere of the environment that we are in. November, December, end of the year. So it will be a lot of gathering. It will be a lot of partying and get together. That we will be challenged. Whether we like it or not, yeah. it will be there. Eh? And that's why she's saying, if you patch up everything, every credit and every things that are due for november and december so you come and even if you left with ten dollars or twenty dollars i tell you that's okay yeah that's good enough that's good enough because the commitment for this festive season it's not only in your family it's a workplace uh even the church there's a lot of things going on. So like break a party here thanksgiving party here all those things you know it one way or the other it affects your wallet there's money coming out of your wallet to make that happen yeah Number one, it's your environment. Yeah. See, we're sharing your environment that you you cannot run away from it. It's the end of the festive season. Sometimes we plan as families to go to the village, and sometimes we plan for the church. A lot of things. Number two, 
the people that you mingle with, they, they can become your challenge. Because everybody wants to flow in the normal flow, or the stairs, the festive flow, or the party flow, or um, the makasambu sambu flow. And a challenge that you can do, you can do it. 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 But then you have a budget with two, so commit can you do that? finance. So, and a render vehicle, send a render mona mona la cosivita seco, um, seco basuka, a sonaka, cosa to one or two. Yeah. Tembale and dona kai vibuki weekend, motuana rawa, kumita rawa. When a kakuniko, uh, tataratales and obata, they love, they love to go. Tutia bibi dapat kau sih, bikin dana itu okay. Nih kau ni tiga kira dana labo, entah mila mila tonga dana lihat dana mendalam labo dana tambah tambah toka, entah mesin yang nasi ni lalang, nih tiga dana labo. Kau membalik, na na nunggu tu tolong ani was wasya, kau kau tak kira bawa nuan dudur meba kau kira mesin mata, bona tak kira kau dudur meba nanti. Ena, lagu mai na 2024, ena ena tarawih nak nunggu mumbula, siapa kau rata kau nunggu mumbula. Kena nunu tumbula nunggu ani, saya nunggu ni buli, ena be singatale kataraba, na januari februari. Dua tahun ngo, dua tahun mendah kami dah nangaru ni, sana, sana songo tumbu koso, sana tu, songo ada, sana songo tumbu koso, sana ngau nak kena do, terus satu ngabang mama dan enda do kalau ni kina, lagu ni kina, nangai ye, nangai kina lah ni disali, pakai ngata kina, sana ilabu, sana, sana tiga ni ka, enda sawa saya toka, mesum bimbing kina liba liba, mesum bimbing kina rent, weekend, se weekend kena sasa uos, boleh liba liti kau dah susu miti kau, kau tu nanti orang di ni, sana ka. Endon donunga, orang sini orang rotaka. Sekolah kita bawa lagi sekolah ini. Lagu ngaji nak koro, sekolah. Sangat ni takkan tak sih. Bawa tu nana mau maru taka. Namu ni yang begini ngo. Ye sana nambil. Endon donunga mana semua. Sebagai dapa, sebagai dapa. Endon donunga mana semua. Baik. Kebakaran orang sini alam tu taka. Ya, nama itu apa? Nanti 2023. Saat tiga butu nambil bi kini dollar dollar. Kena kaya endon don mo mo susu mi kena. Lagu mana Januari? Enama. Yeah, that goes back to the beginning of the year. Uh, I've always emphasized the fact, like when you start the year, uh, project the end of the year, which means when the year comes, don't live blindly like the end of the year is not going to come. It will come. As we spoke in January for the family table talk, I was uh, emphasizing mostly on how you do your budget, on how you can start working plenty from the beginning of the year now that we have come towards the end of the year. And I believe most of us didn't have the opportunity to, to really follow you know, what we need to do. But, and yet, when we come to December, then we felt, oh, I should have, could have. But, you know, you've gone past the year. And you shouldn't forget that, but take that with you for the upcoming year. And try, keep on trying until you achieve it. Keep on trying until you say to yourself, okay, I can master this. And uh, because no one is perfect, it's all learning. And in the learning process, when you're willing to learn, then it takes you, makes you a better person. No one is perfect. As and when you are willing to learn, then it, 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 you know, it takes you to another level, takes you to another level. And you gain knowledge, you gain confidence, and you gain things that you never have uh, as you go along the way. Yeah. So, say if, if in the beginning of the year, which you may not have done it, but take it as a thought uh, for 2024. Uh, if you're working and you have access to your account and you don't have any problems in creating uh, new accounts within your account, within the bank that you bank with, and I'm speaking to you also foreign, uh, for those of you that are outside Fiji, you have the capability of uh, opening other accounts within the same bank, or you have um, you know, a choice with other banks. Like in Fiji, we have uh, uh, HFC, we have Brand, we have Westpac, ANZ, and we have BSP. So we have about five banks to choose from. But for other countries, you have quite a fair bit of banks to choose from uh, as well. So try and find out how do you open a new account. As and when you do, then you allocate an account for the end of the year. Or you allocate an account for your mortgage or um, you know, your investment, what you want to buy. If you're planning uh, to buy a house, if you're planning to buy a car, or for you to bump up or build up your deposit uh, for that particular loan that you uh, cannot really get the substantial amount that you need uh, to be able to get that loan. These are the accounts because as soon as you get your pay, then you do deduction direct from source. Don't take it out and then you go and deposit. No, allow the bank deduction to do it. You program it. Like in Fiji, we have that, you know, that ability. Uh, online, you can go online to all the banks 
and you can uh, program your deduction or you can program your transfers as and when that day pops up you cannot control it your account automatically does what it's supposed to be done because you've already programmed it that will help you because when you uh, get your pay the money that you're receiving you know this is the money that i need uh, to pay for the rent or to pay for um, uh, for the house because if you're uh, um, if you have a loan your mortgage is already deducted straight from sales mm -hmm. or straight from your you know from your salary but this little money it can be ten dollars to this account it can be twenty dollars to this account every time you get paid whether it's weekly monthly or fortnightly whenever you get a pay this ten dollars automatically go there you don't have any control over it because you've programmed it and that money it adds up it, it really does and you tell yourself, that's the money that is there, but I, I don't access it. Which means if you say, I'm speaking for Fiji. If you're in Fiji and you open a Westpac account, and it's a deduction from your ANZ account, then don't use that Westpac card. Um, don't, don't even get yourself a card, or you cut your card, and live without that card for the whole year. All you know, your money is going there, your money is going there, your deduction is going there. And you keep a record of it, keep a tally uh, in your bag. Uh, in your book for you to know, okay, this money that I'm saving is the amount up to this. And if you're not a very good bookkeeper, and you're not a very good saver, then don't keep a record. Because you know, once you see the money there, you will go and get it. So blindly, just leave it. And you just say to yourself, this is the only money that I have, which is the leftover money that comes. You've, if you're a Christian, you organize your tithe to go wherever it goes. And all these savings... Uh, if you're paying your mortgage, then it's automatically deducted from your payroll. And whatever money that comes out, then that's the money for you to figure out. And then at home, I try and have a pocket. There is a plastic pocket uh, that have, you know, um, dividers inside. You can get it from Suva Bookshop if you're in Suva and any other bookshop in Fiji. But for uh, U.S., you can get it from the 99ers. I saw it in the Dollar Tree shop uh, as well, or even at Walmart. And there in Europe, you have your, you know, bookshop out there that you can uh, pick up all these pieces. And even the Poundland have, have got all those things. So, the compartment going is under label taka, rent, uh, water, uh, electricity, and food, and miscellaneous, other things. So, when your pay come out, you will know. Like, if there is a need for your rent to be paid, then this compartment, you must have an envelope. Now, I will tell you that you have to pay for your rent, towards your rent, put the cash inside that envelope. Put that money inside that envelope. So put the money in those envelopes. As and when it, it's due, you go to this compartment, you take it out, and you count all the dollars and say, okay, I only have a few more dollars to work. Because when you do that, your mind is organized knowing uh, this is what I like. And apart from that, apart from your whatever that you do, on the side that I've explained, you need to have a book to write out. Like if you have a book and you have rent, you have water, write it down. Like what I said, I... I work for an organization, we have a payment voucher to justify the spend, which means it needs to be requested for, it needs to be verified, and needs to be approved. There's three signatory uh, on that. Not only for the company, even for the church that I belong to, which uh, I look up to the administration, we have payment vouchers, which means every spend of money, whether it's $1, or right up to $100, or $1,000, it must be justified that you're making this spend um, you know, it's verified because it's a spend that you cannot avoid. You need to. And out of these two payment vouchers, I create my own and I call it personal payment voucher. Which means as and when I spend money on my grandchildren, if anything that is happening in school, I will get those receipts and I have a file. And I know people that work with me, they can uh, be testament to what I'm sharing today. And in my office, I've got a file for my personal payment vouchers. I've got a book for my personal spend. I write down what I spent in my family, what I spent on other things. So I have a record of it. Even the savings that I put in my account, I have a book for it that talks about my account and the money that I put in and also the money that I spent. And if I spend money coming out to helping, uh, maybe the company didn't, you know, there's some, uh, some stakeholders, they don't take check or they don't, you know, it takes a, a long process to be paid. So sometimes, I use my card for that, uh, not only for the company, but for the ministry as well. And as and when I do use that card, I'll get all the receipts done, I'll fill out the payment voucher uh, from the ministry or the company to bring that money back and offset and put it back into my account. So when you, when you take control of the money coming in, going out, regardless of how little it may be or how huge your money is, 
when your management is good, you can make up something greater out from the little money that you can. You know, with the little money that you get, and then you say to yourself, oh, I won't be able to do that because it's too much. If I have to deduct uh, my saving and deduct uh, towards the function, uh, towards the end of the year, and uh, I will be left with nothing. Well, when you're left with the little that you have, and then you work yourself from there, and you look out, what are the little things that you can do? Even if you're working, can you make some puzzles right here, or can you make some hot ons uh, I've always shared this. When I was working, I was getting paid well, working in the, at the hangar, looking good, getting dressed, going to work every day uh, for Air Pacific then, now it's Fiji Airways. But yet, my containers of hot dogs, my roti curry and everything in my car, still getting my orders to the neighboring companies around there at the airport, TFL. I get it delivered, I get my money. I, you know, do something in my house, tile my house, paint my house. So, because I know the money that I get on my pay is not enough, for me to be doing all these things that I project. So don't be guided or just be strict, you know, uh, thinking that this is the only money you get. No, you look out. Oh, no, it's amazing uh, what you can achieve. So, like what I, you know, I mentioned earlier, if this is what you have done until the end of the year now, and you say to yourself, I should have, could have, don't go there. You need to look back, learn from it, and then you say to yourself, I must do it uh, for 2024. Remember the feeling you have now and tell yourself, this is the last time I'm going to feel this way because by this time next year, I'm going to be good. Because when you remember that feeling, you will do something uh, about it. And also, not only for the end of the year, you know, getting together. Uh, some of your children, uh, some, uh, you know, birthday celebration, some even one year old. So some of the birthday celebration, it's a must do. And those birthday celebration as well, you take that into account. Write it out. So, okay, took another more account here, Kokati, Koikuran, you beat it to Kokin and Elabo, no more love in the Kanye Songo. Another one on a song, Lakumai, Niko Kila, Ikori, Tramaka, whatever, you know, uh, event or any other short call, you know, I put this money aside. So, you won't touch any other money, but you'll just work with that money. If you come in, this amount is there, well, that's just. Teach yourself that's just the amount that you're going to use. You're not going to pull from any other because be mindful. When you pull, you affect all the other areas as well. But if you don't have the ability to open extra accounts, then go the old way, in the old school way. I used to do that um, before, not now. Just have the envelopes. Have the envelopes and write rent, uh, water, and electricity bill, uh, 21st birthday. Do all those envelopes and um, put it in a safe place. And if you have only one account, like what I said, because if you continue to put in the same account and you're looking at that amount of money, you will think that you have access to that money. But if you take it out and put it somewhere, you know this is the only money going to work with, and this is the money that's going to be substantial enough uh, to look after your days to come, and also your rainy days, and your good days, and your projected days. Yeah, we're talking much about the budget and planning and savings. Because when you manage your money, you can manage everything. Eh? Yeah. If, if you can manage your finance, your money, then uh, you can manage anything that comes your way. Your time, yeah. your talent, and even uh, your achievement. No, most of us, we achieve well. Education yes. and in our workplace. But we, if we cannot manage well, then all this talent and all this yeah. achievement Come will mount up to zero. Because we cannot manage well. Uh, Randini was uh, sharing eh, that uh, uh, sometimes we look at our just sal salary. But you can do more things outside uh, your, your normal salary yeah. because of the demand that is in today. Uh, handicraft, uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, open up small canteens or shops. There are things that you can do just because you can manage well. And as he said, we've been talking on, uh, on budgeting and money management. And we believe as we approach the end, uh, another two weeks to go, uh, the end of this year, 2023, we, we take this time to wish you well. Wish you well for this year, 2023, and also come to 2024. Nothing is impossible. We also talk about our, our health. Uh, we believe uh, uh, to round off uh, this 2023, uh, you can have all the plans that you have. You can have all the achievement and all the resources that you have. But if you don't look after yourself, 
then who will enjoy what you put aside yeah. for the future? Sure so you must have yeah. a, a right diet, right way of life. Yeah. Um, I was reading one uh, documentary the other day, the, the sunshine, <laughs> the, the sunshine and the air that we breathe and uh, the, the exercise that we do. These are three things uh, when we do it, we don't realize that we are extending the hours of our life. Yeah? Just walk in the sun for the sun to shine on your, for, on, your, on, your, on your head. Or just doing a walking or exercise. You know, sometimes uh, there are places that you can walk or you can uh, do, do your prayer and walk. Or there are places that, uh, that you can go up the stairs instead of the lift. Uh, small things that we can contribute so the functions of our body remain the same and uh, not uh, depend too much on the provision that we have today. We have the cars, we have the bus, the transportation, and uh, hardly we walk nowadays. But when you go overseas and you see a lot of people either they riding the bicycle or they just walk in the park or in the beach, there are a lot of facilities that is made for, for walking because they start to realize just by walking. Uh, this morning I finished with, uh, with my prayer and uh, I was driving home. I saw these uh, three, I don't know whether they are Chinese ladies or, or, or Korean ladies. Uh, they live around in Lothala Beach Estate. Every morning, whether I'm with my granddaughter feeding the, the, the birds or whether I'm coming back from, uh, from the uh, seawall. I, I will see these three. I, I think they'll be over 70. They'll be nearly 80. Three of them, they will be walking. And I said, no wonder they, they can still walk in no, there. I, I see yeah. for the Asians, uh, it's uh, you know, their way of life. Eh? They don't need to be told or need to be reminded. Uh, I have uh, Korean uh, lady friends. And uh, because most of the time as I come in, they're doing their stretches. And then, you know, I'll just laugh it up and I said, okay, do you do that early morning? And then one thing that they uh, shared, then they said, you know, when we are born, growing up, this is part of our life. And everybody, for Koreans, uh, we do this. And I said, really? And I said, yeah. And then she mentioned that for you people, it's like you have to go out of your way. It becomes an activity or go for training. Uh, for us, no, it's our life. It's like, it's like our eating and our going to have our shower. And I said, oh, okay. That's why, you know, they are always nice, frisky and small. And, uh, yeah, it, it was amazing just to hear that. Uh, because they are always one size and they are always active, regardless, well, like what he mentioned, even up to the 70s and 80s. And even at times when you're down at sea, well, you see couples, you yeah. know, husband and wife, uh, Asians, and they're just doing okay. their work. And, um, and to them, it's a way of life. It's like they need to do that. So for us, sometimes we get carried away. I get carried away, and that's one thing that I like about my Apple Watch. What it does, it will prompt me. Uh, it will tell me, uh, stand up, uh, this, uh, stand up, it's the time to stand up. Uh, because if you wear it all the time, it monitors your body, and I, and I believe it does for other fit, uh, watch, Fitbit watch as well. Eh? Uh, what that watch does, it tells you about your body. Uh, if you're walking, it, it, it records. Uh, whatever activities you do, it records. And then during the day, it reminds you. And right in the middle of my work that I'm busy or in the meeting, and then it's telling me, stand up. So in my office, if no one sees me, um, you know, they'll be thinking, okay, what's wrong? Because whenever that happens, I'll have to stand, uh, try and, you know, dust the shelf or do the files or walk around in my office or come out, uh, come out to the staff, you know, and say hello and create conversation. So it's like a reminder, mm. uh, a reminder that you need to move your body, especially so when you're getting young, old like us. And, um, and sometimes, you know, on how you get off the bus, I'll say in Suva, but your office is too far out. So it's easy for you. Get off the bus, you hail it, you know, you call it to a taxi. Don't call the taxi. Get yeah. off the bus and you walk it. Walk it. Because that little walk, oh, it does so much. Uh, you know, because other than that, there's no other time to walk. In the morning, you're busy with your children and your grandchildren. In the afternoon, you are busy with the same tribe all the time. So to have something on the side on your own, it has to be within uh, your working time or within at the time that you have on your own. So the healthy living, um, 
sometimes we say, okay, I need to go to the gym or I need to be doing all these things. No, it's, it's a simple walk we'll do. Don't overthink it because when you're planning, it's not going to happen. And sometimes it takes longer to happen. Start with a simple walk. If it takes you just to walk around the house, walk around the house. If you are on the elevated place, maybe two, three uh, steps up, walk up and down. Yeah, it may look silly, but it means you're walking up and down. Something is moving, your blood is, you know, circulating somewhere there. So walk up and down. And if it takes for you just to walk out and take out the rubbish bin, might as well. If you have people that used to do it for you, well, choose two, at least so three morning, you're going to do that to yourself. Just to give you an excuse, you're going to walk it and help you. At least for our office, it's not as much. It's only a one flight stairs. And uh, yeah, sometimes uh, people struggle to come up the steps, but it's the steps, which means it's sort of like, you know, your body is moving. And um, those are the little things that you can do. And now for the festive season, it's a season to be merry, eat and be happy. And sometimes that is even not part of the equation. To walk, forget it. You'll take it from one end to another, and you'll sit and hog. So December, it's like a slackest month for being healthy for most of us. So try and bear that in mind. And uh, still do something little uh, that you can and uh, make it happen uh, for, for your life. Because at the end of the day, like what, what we always say, sometimes we are so busy uh, living, so busy working, so busy making it happen, uh, so busy trying to make things the way it is uh, with all those finances and, and working towards your wealth, but you forget about the health. Your wealth is good, but your health is not in a good place. Because when your health is good, then you're definite and confident. Whatever wealth you have created, you'll be around to enjoy them. And it's going to be enough for you to enjoy it with your family. And sometimes you get so worked up and roped up in working up the wealth, you forget about your health. So you get minus from the equation earlier. And the very thing that you die for, overworked, stressed, not enough rest, they took you out of the equation, is left for who? For somebody else to enjoy it. So this is the time for you to sit rethink and reprioritize and recreate your new lifestyle plan yeah most of the time when we uh, when we walk sometimes we don't realize that yeah. uh, the the distance that we are adding up mm. and we are accumulating so that's why it's always good in the office and you stand up and walk here and walk there uh, don't allow the the busy schedules to uh, to make you sit down for a long time uh, from time to time, uh, Radini is saying there's a, a watch that always remind her you've been sitting for too long. And uh, for those of us that we have uh, the, um, the privilege of uh, walking, yeah. you know, walking up and walking down, walk. and uh, it will help you with your muscle, uh, help you with your circulating of, uh, of your blood. blood yeah. And uh, for those of us that live near the sea or the seawall or mountain, that's even better. You spend uh, 10 minutes, uh, maybe five minutes, just to do a little bit of exercise. Because that is part and parcel of looking after your health. Yeah. Not only the food, most of the time we concentrate on the food. Remember, also on the style of life that you, that you uh, go through. Not only that, uh, uh, one thing that also affects our, our life and even our brain, our style of thinking, is uh, the screen time or the screen time i remember one of our pastor friend from australia when we uh, go together and uh, sleep at night he will not want any any light to be on and one day i asked him why you don't want even the smallest even the the light from the mobile or the light from microwave or the light from the television that small red light yeah and said all those light can uh, affect your sleeping and your sleeping is your resting most of the time uh, the little things that we can uh, amend and do not a big thing not going to the gym and run and sweat it out no the little things that you can do uh, to be part and parcel of uh, your health remember your health is very important yeah. most of the time uh, we see in our in our country in fiji a lot of people are dying young in their late mid 20s late 20s and early 30s that's very very yeah. very young and uh, i believe it's our lifestyle and uh, something that we need to share 
something that we need to teach uh, in our villages, uh, set up, or even as a family, when we sit as a family, and uh, also from churches, and also from the Ministry of Health, the awareness of the little things that we can do. It's not, you are not paying any money for that, but you can do all those little things that uh, help you to live a healthy life. Mm. So, healthy life will make you to enjoy life. Okay. How can you enjoy life if you are sickly? That means you are not going to the place you're supposed to be. You are sickly, you are, um, maybe you can't walk well, you just take few steps and uh, body pain, muscle, and sometimes uh, you are depressed or you are, uh, you are affected by, uh, by the high blood pressure. And all these things, it does not give, give us the, the happiness that we're supposed to. Uh, to have. Remember, life is not only work. Life is not only money. Life is not only the achievement. Life, when you enjoy every part and every phase of life. So, uh, this morning we have been uh, talking on managing yeah. our finance and now uh, we are summing up on, uh, on our health. Yeah. Yes, health is very important. Uh, if you haven't had any medical uh, check for yeah. this year, I write it down for next year. I don't wait until it's too late because life is only once. You only live your life once. Sometimes you may think, oh, it's too much of a time. It's a waste of time. Oh, it's going to take out money from my wallet. Uh, whatever it is, it's not enough to take you out completely uh, from knowing on how healthy you are, not only for you, uh, for your family as well. Because if you really love them, it's a good investment on your uh, uh, health check. And uh, there are facilities in the hospitals that are done uh, without any money at all or any cost at all, uh, which means that all of us, you need to know your health uh, so you can work towards it. You need to know uh, your condition so you can live right. Because if, uh, if not, you will blindly continue to live like everything is okay, but the very thing that you're lacking and the very thing that you're enjoying, they are creating more damage and harmful uh, to your current uh, health status. So it's good to know. Sometimes we live um, out of self-denial. We deny the fact uh, that we are sick. Vale we can then eat okay. But kind of sin in the other one back. The second in the admit taka, in the Toby Mate, Nikakaniko, ever Kaiko Sambal of Chukanamo, we lang out and don't know, on Bolivina Katina, and the Naka Langavia. But the Kenan of the Matan Dovo Sota, and on the Baba. Eleven one and in the Baba to get the Toby Mate, can the second in the Tukun, can the Nana Katiba and Donga Nabu, Lay, say Donga the most new Lay. So most of the time we live our life in self-denial that we are not a sick or we don't need help. Sometimes it's good to be told that you need help. And don't be ashamed to say that I need help. Everybody need help. Every now and again, you need help. Because no one is perfect. You are not made to be you know, self-proclaimed that you don't you need anybody else. No, we need each other. You need your family around you. And you need people around you to help you. And be that person to be part of that community that people around you, they love you for who you are. And they're always there to, to also help you. And, uh, and don't think that uh, the help is not around. It is there. So, Bitcoin, you can tell me about Bitcoin. I can tell you 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 about Bitcoin. Go and have a chat. And uh, especially for, you know, I was having a good conversation with uh, two uh, wives uh, for this week. And it was because I saw this article on the paper on, on the heart. So I call both of them in, and I say, look, photocopy this, read it, understand what your husbands go through, and understand what they're standing on, and understand this sickness. You need to understand the sickness for you to be able to help them uh, to realize how serious it is, and also to talk together, because if anything happened, the responsibility and the accountability to the family, and if anything happened, how it affects the family. So maybe we don't want to talk about that, but it's good to talk about it, because when you do understand, then it no longer becomes an issue. It's like, okay, you're not supposed to be having salt. 
uh, there are some strict diet given by the doctor, or you're not supposed Stats. to be having oily food, and and then you create that kind of thing. Oh, you know, who are you? You're not the doctor. Give it to me. I want to eat it. Um, so those kind of conversation it happens. But if you have a, a, a good sit down and you have a discussion, look. Your health, like it's your own, and, it, and I know you want to mind your own business, and you're trying to tell me it's none of my business, it's yours, but this is what the doctor says, which means I'm speaking to you, this is the one who is not sick. I'm speaking to you on the basis for our family. If anything ever happens to you, this is what you're going to leave behind. You're going to leave me behind and leave these children behind. This bill's behind. This is the reality of what it is. So I will, we will need to talk about that for you to realize whatever decision that you will make, which I will not have a say in it, because it's your health, it's your life. Whatever decision that you're going to make, I will want you to consider what I am trying to tell you, that you will leave me behind if anything happens, your children and all these bills, and where we will go if we don't have a house. So, because when you have those kind of serious conversation, then you will take ownership of your health and your life. You will not live in self-denial, continue to say, I am good, I am good. Everybody wants to say that we are good. When you know it's a slightest, and you know, you know, you can handle. Yeah, indirectly speaking, you're trying to say, don't worry about it, I am good. I can, you know, live with this. But, you know, you can handle it. And this is one thing that I was actually sharing with these two ladies. And I was telling them, if it means, if the diet says no salt, and if the diet says no oily food, make that a rule in your house. Which means no salt and no oily food. And think of all the boiled food and all its delicacy that's going to make it more attractive for your children to eat. Because I know, I grew up in a home, when I was in year nine, I grew up in a home, um, a diabetic home. My mom is diabetic. And uh, our, our menu, our meals, and everything was centered around my mother. Which means we don't eat starch, we grow cassava. We plant cassava. We have cassava and dalo plantation, but we sell them. And we eat uto, we eat kumala, we eat vundi. So even though we are accessible, but we are guided by what happened to my mother because everything that is on the table, it has to be what my mother eats and everybody has to eat what my mother eats. And, and I'm glad because through that teaching, I brought that to my family and not to my grandchildren. We don't just cook dalo at home or cassava at home to eat. Now, Joshua will come and say, no, no, I need to put on a few more you know, weight. I need a few more cages and I need more, more starch. So I will turn to my daughter-in-law because she does our dinner cooking. I will tell, okay, can you cook cassava or cook dalo for him? Uh, and that's how all other things that come on board now because there's a reason for it. But other than that, our life is defined by the way that I was brought up. And, and this is exactly, I'm sharing to these two ladies and I'm sharing with you, women that are going through the same. Or even men, if your wife is someone that is sick. Uh, try and be supportive in the sense that you change your household uh, to, you know, to accommodate them, to facilitate them. So they don't become the odd one out. Uh, they become, you know, they fit in. You will, I mean, you will face that challenge because some things you eat, you don't want it. But do it for the sake of their life and do yeah. it for the sake of them living a little bit longer. Um, yeah. Dr. Lewis to share about his health and how he got checked and cleared. We had, we had those moments. And I know when I was talking to these two ladies and I was telling them, I know what it's like because it happened in my life. It happened in our family. I banned salt from our table. Until today, we don't have salt standing on our table. Whoever wants to use salt, have to walk it to the cupboard, get the salt, use it, put back the salt. That's a rule. And it helps our family. And we have, you know, boiled food. Uh, we uh, go for white meat. So they eat chicken and I eat my fish and he loves his fish. So no red meat altogether. Not until the everything was cleared and everything, you know, back to normal. Then we start buying red meat again. We buy brisket. And uh, yeah, salt is still minus the equation. Only as a man. But we push each other towards the sauces. Yeah. So he has his favorite sauce and chilies and all other things but minus the salt. And, and those are the little things even that we can do. Yeah. Red meat is it's not, not as much. Yeah. Uh, even though we love red meat, but we, we conscious 
about the doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe because after you've gone through it, yeah. and then it's clear, like you were healed of that, when you come back, you're not the same person yes. you were. Yeah. Like you live every day conscious that this thing will lead to that. Yeah. So you take only a little bit of it, or sometimes you think yourself, I can go without yeah. it. You know, like the kind of thinking. Eh? And, uh, and as you said, eh, when you remove all those things, or you tailor-made uh, the, the meals yeah. on the table to the one that is on. Eh? Yeah. So everybody, instead of uh, enjoying what they're enjoying, we are also going to a healthy way. Yeah. Huh? So we are not only put everyone to be on the same table, eating the same food, healthy food. We are also educating all those in the household to eat uh, boiled food, which is the healthy food. Eh? And uh, before we, we don't have this uh, boiling Monday and Tuesday, uh, we just eat whatever. Because the food is whatever tastes good in our mouth. Yeah. It's not so good with our, with our health. Eh? Yeah. And, and those things, we were not taught. Nobody teaches us those things. Eh? Yeah. We just go by what we see and what we taste, but not on the health. Growing up yeah. with your parents, it's amazing on how they just uh, cook food at home. It's either boil or lolo. Yeah. You know, they hardly do. I think the, the common food that we have now in the cities, in the urban areas, is always curry. You know, very soon, our intestine and everything will turn yellow. It's always curry. And uh, everybody just make curry. I think it's so easy. Uh, uh, and then, I mean, when you come to think about it, it goes back to finances as well. Eh? It's the only food uh, that is easy. We have, uh, yeah, we have, uh, like in, in the church that we're in, uh, that we, we, we get rostered for, uh, for feeding our mission people, our, our mission team. And nearly every time when you open the prepare, it's always curry, always curry. And, and I believe it's easy to throw the potato in and throw it with anything, and then it's less uh, expense. And sometimes the way that you're eating and the way that you're living your life, uh, if you don't have a choice to be healthy, because it's the only affordable, the affordable meals that you can make. Well, if, if money becomes an issue, then you can think of other cheaper ways. It can be the mbele bakarkara with tuna. Um, my, one of my daughters, I don't know how she likes it, but boy, I mean, even when I see her eating it, I said, okay, she loves handuruka. And she lives in uh, Germany, she loves handuruka. Then for me, duruka, I can only eat it if it's lolo with fish, fried fish, lolo, I love my duruka that way. Or I taste it from my Indian friend that makes duruka curry with roti. But my daughter, this one here, she boils duruka, drinks the water of the duruka, and eat duruka like that. And I'll be watching, okay, you know, are you really eating that? I said, no, it's really nice. It's really, really lovely. And I said, no, I don't really like that. So there are ways and means on how to live healthy and even dal. Dal is just good enough. It becomes your protein. Uh, not only that, it's healthy. And uh, it's easy, and it's uh, affordable, and it's cheap. And that is why for most of us, they do now, we throw everything inside. The mbaingani, the carrot, the, the noodles. So when it's done, it becomes a dal curry. And uh, I mean, it, it has its value. So try and uh, live healthy, uh, projecting for 2024, and be careful for 2023 and, uh, because this is the time to eat anything and everything that you ever want to eat. First of all, try and lessen your only food and cut out your raw salt. That's on the health side. Yeah, uh, one thing too, we, we have uh, the change of uh, the meals that we have, eh? the, the Asian style, not yeah. only Indian curry, but we have the Chinese now. Eh? Chop suey. With our, our parents and uh, with uh, the people that are brought up in the village, normally we eat our normal food, uh, cassava, tavu, and uh, uto tavu, uh, the wundi, sangha. Eh? And all those greens, you know, with a little bit of fish here and there. Uh, I believe that's why they, they live long life. And yeah. I mean, in the village, if somebody is 70, 71, 72, oh, he still go to the plantation, still carry, you know, yeah. and that's why they live But I believe it's all the, the food, lifestyle, yeah. the, especially the food. Eh? The lifestyle that we, we we have today, we must be very careful. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and back in about 10 years ago, eh? processed food. Processed food, we have tea, we have noodles. Eh? 
la nourrice dit que ça l'a remis quoi ça l'a fait tout le temps pour faire 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 ça l'a I'm glad I'm not supposed to be here to discuss that uh, plan uh, food to be what it is, eh? and uh, on, on the amount of salt that is being placed in to maintain and retain that uh, whatever it is, it can be sausage, uh, pre-cooked by sausage, it can be tin meat, yeah. uh, tin tuna, anything that is being processed to be maintained and used as it is, salt is part of that yeah. uh, uh, equation, and then you say about the noodles yeah. because of the flavor. And, and the flavor is a lot of salt. A lot of salt. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and then you say, you know, they're even eating it raw. raw. So, I, want, I mean, my, my youngest granddaughter, she's all, only three years old. She loves some noodles. And she loves it with a little bit of soup. But sometimes she'll stand there. I want noodles, like no water. I want noodles dry. Which means we have to open the pack of medjugorje, open the flavor, put a little bit in it. And she's eating it dry. It's not healthy. Yeah. And even myself, I'm eating it. Like I like that taste. You know, salt is very a challenge. I don't think salt is a challenge that makes it a processed food. What it is. And also, it's not healthy, eh? because it's been stored for quite some yeah. time and for months or years. Eh? And that's why uh, uh, eating back into our backyard, like the belly boil, maybe it does not taste uh, good into our mouth, but it's very healthy into our body. Eh? Uh, so it's a challenge because the, of the urban drift, drift that every one of us, you know, sometimes when you go for evangelism and you eat a new <laughs> new ruru bagautona and you check the bagautona, it's, uh, it's no longer what we used to know that uh, you put the shrimp inside. Now, uh, ruru bagautona. Uh, and uh, and uh, 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 Satu toko tu kau nak visau, ia nak sah visau, kau sah visau tengah tengah. The life ceiling is really reduced. People are dying. Aku dah suka tu kau nak biar kami. Biar aku nak kau suka nak biar kami. Saya aku sesuatu tak bangga. Enang aku nak di COVID. Dona aku nak lekak lekak aku, tapi aku tu kau nak lebu lebu bulan nak kami. Kebalik nak bawa lima nak orang kalau aku, enak aku tu kau nak. Saya asyik tu bayar ilu. Mau waktu nak COVID, mau izin buat ni lagi, mau buat di laut tali. Kebetulan le, lebu tali tu kan nama ten dollar, se mati, segan ini nama ki, ya turun ke mana, mati rumah ke mana ni lewa. All to do with our lifestyle. Ni ko rezang anak kakak nama kan dia bawa nak, kena lifestyle mau bulat tak? Do tali gua nama muade, muade. Do nak do tu kan boleh lebu, nanti tu bunuh ayam kat mata wale. Doktor Om cungur di kino ya, nanti jangan selim di kino ya. Do tu tu lebu, when you sleep, tolu na ayam do tolu na ayam nak repair, gay tolu na ayam nak kena wah, macam mana? Three hours of repairing and three hours of healing. Kembali weekend na, dah baru tu main mata kan isingan di daya, and a family table talk. So nangau na na ala ko tunggu ni. Wah, usi bilang orang ko, nangau na ni. Anggun yang berkah, esok akan berkah di dunia ni mana? Anggun yang berkah di Italia, kita sah lakukan songo, sah lakukan lasa, sah lakukan video kani. Waktu anda sah sini kau itu kan, rakyat ini bula, yang tuntut mendisiplin tigo, non dan bula, nak kaya tak kania, kau bawa CV, nak kaya tak tahu kena, memang mani ni taki, bila tadi tu tali tu nak cari refer refer ni, dan dua tali yang berkah itu, satu kira nak boleh boleh, mesti nak garap kira bawa binakan itu tadi. Well, that's all about budget and uh, health living guidelines. Uh, if you're already doing it, congratulations and thank you for looking after your health and looking after your family and uh, looking after your life. Uh, for the remaining minutes, I want to bring to the table on relationships. Uh, relationship with husband and wife, a relationship uh, with your family, because uh, for the month of December, that is going to be challenged uh, in the fact that everybody you know, would like to do whatever they want to do. And sometimes we actually go as silos or different people and we forget about the responsibility, your accountability uh, to the family that you belong to. So wherever you go, if you're going on your own, remember you have a family for children. If your parents and grandparents yeah. trust you where you go, remember you're accountable to your grandparents or you're accountable to your parents. And uh, there should be a sense of responsibility as and where you go. And there should be a sense of responsibility and trust where wife and husband or spouses 
uh, you know, uh, yeah, involved. So with the remaining last minute, uh, I would like to bring that to the table. And uh, I was reading uh, through an article yesterday and come across, um, this is a, a US uh, article to say uh, the higher rate of, uh, you know, marriage breakups, uh, divorces uh, that happen. And uh, this article actually um, write out or list out uh, some of the reasons why that happened, or the reasons from the woman or the reason from the man uh, that make that happen. And I would like to bring it to this table because it's really good to know. Um, you know, sometimes your, your ring, after getting married, you think that's it, you know? And you don't work on your marriage. Your marriage is already done deal. You get married, you have the ring. You have the offspring, the children, you have the responsibility, the house, and what comes with it. And that's it. You're like booked for life or doomed for life. And, and then you forgo the fact that uh, there is a relationship that you need to work on. And there is a relationship to your children that you need to work on. And there is a combined uh, effort relationship of the one you have with your spouse and also with your children uh, to make your family work. And, and that is a responsibility. It has its own accountabilities from every individual player. It's not a one-man game. or It's not a one-woman game. Everybody should make it happen and know their responsibility and be told of their uh, responsibility as well. So even as they stray away or when they do come out from this setup, they will be always be convicted that they have a responsibility or an accountability to a uh, setup, which means Whatever they do, they'll be guided by this. But with no accountability, no responsibility, no discussion whatsoever, then you are doing what you're doing, and it leads to a lot of marriage uh, breakup. Go back to the article that I was uh, reading yesterday, and, and it, uh, it says one thing that really stick out, as I read, was the irk moment. Um, I don't know what is the actual pronunciation for it. It's I-C-K. It's either ick or irk uh, moment the irk moment of some uh, men and women on how they couldn't stand their spouse. And those are the things, uh, when the friends and their family look in, nothing was wrong with it, but the very person that are living with these people, uh, they find those moments, um, you know, it can be small in the eyes of the many looking in, but it's something huge that is affecting uh, their relationship. And it's, it's like a turn off uh, to their marriage. And those are the little things. And also, most importantly, you must be content. You must be content. And don't kaya or or we na kati kenda. Men da na rongoda, men da na remain tiki kenda. Because sa wakawati, rather na wati mo ge kavi ko. I am content. Because when contentment is not there, you are always looking. You look there. You look there. You look everywhere. And if you are not in church that you are guided, you don't look everywhere and look after your wife. Then you are staying in. And even some of us, you are in church, you're still looking around. And like what I said, what I'm sharing today, it's not for people that don't go to church. It's for people who go to church. It's for people, for humans. It's for everybody. Because even people who go to church, who knows uh, there is a sin to commit adultery, but yet, because of this uh, discontentment, I would say, that they go looking elsewhere for all these things, they break up their marriages. So we are not talking about the organization. We're not talking about the contributing factors. We are talking about you. So you as a person, I as a person, he as a person, you as a person, which means you need to look within you. Don't worry about the whole family. Don't worry about the organization you work in. And don't worry about the church you attend. Just look within you. And you look within you and look at your wife, look at your husband, look at your children, look at your family, and you must get that answer. Do it today or do it tomorrow. You must do this. And say to yourself, I am content. I am content. God bless you with four. Or God bless you with two. Or you, you've been blessed with five. Well, most families are still praying for one. But you are blessed. So when you look at that setup and then you say to yourself, I managed to buy a house or we've managed to stay in this place, or I've managed to buy a car. So look around just for you to find that contentment in your heart. Because I guarantee, once you find that contentment, then you will say to yourself, I am good. Mm -hmm. 
are ungrateful and you are not content. And you are always looking out and always finding fault in people around you to justify your errors or to justify the things you do. So look around you and say, if you are content, then if you are content and you love your family, then make them to be the priority. Which means if you socialize for seven days in a week, keep three days for your family. Undivided attention. Let the other days for them and keep these three days or four days that you can uh, you know, commit to that you dedicate it to your family. And they get your undivided attention and every child of yours receive from you, you have a good conversation with them, and you can talk to your husband, or you can talk to your wife, and you can have that quality time. And because if not, Kokaitiko, when you are discontent, you're always looking out. You're always looking out. Um, and most, I may be wrong, but most I see uh, for some men and women, they're always looking out, even though they have it right there. In their family, it's all there. You have a beautiful wife, you have a beautiful, uh, I mean a handsome husband, you have beautiful children and very obedient children and not the kind of children you're always looking out the right way for you're going to the nightclubs are checking where they are they are very obedient children you have it good but yet you are looking out you're looking out for attention from another woman you're looking out for attention from another man why are you looking out can't you be content with what you have can't you embrace what you have because what you have it's a prayer request for another what you have Somebody is desiring to have what you have, but yet you're not content. So I want to bring that conversation into this forum uh, because nobody wants to talk about it. Uh, nobody wants to even bring the topic out because with this kind of topic, it involves everybody. It involves head of churches like us. It involves head of communities. Uh, it involves and the Na kakeli go kenda kubuti kere kina. Esenga ni indua me kaibango. O kwe li ulio ni sango sango lotu ya. Me nda na nona noma. O kwe nona na matupo vale. E ndondonu. Esenga ni indua na kailenga kina. Esenga ni indala sa itumba. Esenga ni indua talana kaya ngarova itumba. O kwe sa sa vakadengu. Sa roti kwa ya. Sen. E adu biyo rana li ulio ni sango sango lotu. E adu biyo rana itala tala ni sango sango lotu. E adu biyo rana itala tala ngase ni sango sango lotu. E adu biyo rana minista. E adu biyo rana tutu lele bu na bunoni. Ni biyo daka daka. E adu biyo kenda. Na tiko ni bunoni watani. So we kenda da sale itiko. Sa tu mei vali. Itu mei vitu ira na watina. Da sale va watita. Ko ka itiko. It's none of my business. But I'm making a mention. Because when you don't find that contentment. And you don't have that trust then we are doing what we are doing and that is the picture that we are seeing and this is the thing that people don't want to talk about but i always want to because i realistically want to talk about practical things i don't want to be saying good things when you know good things are not there and we don't want to pick on these things because you know that this is the very thing that is breaking up marriages and take you know uh, separating couples couples can be staying together but they are not bonded the way they are supposed to bond them. you are living together for your own reason Kita satu batu tunggal beri tu nangone tu nama makumbunda atau naitavi mendang garawa sa saya ni kau nak nak kaya enda enda sot amikin. Enza bapu nak naya ni ni kaya enda sot amikin. Balat tengok nana duin duin. Balat tengok nana ni buki buki nimbul lah enda main bola taka. Kau tak lebih nak trust. Kau tak mahu a lot of betrayal because you feel so betrayed by the person you really love. You gave all that you have, and once you betrayed, it's like it's like you, you know, you, you close up. Um, you don't want to go through that process again. So there are a lot of issues that are affecting families right now or relationships that you are trying to cop the flag of what happened. Uh, but it's still, you know, like it's still there, you know, uh, lurking uh, in every conversation when you really re reach to a, a momentum, it's always a point of reference uh, that you're always bringing back the past. Because even though you're forgiven and even though you say, you know, moving forward is the best way to go, but you cannot erase it. It's always there. It's lurking behind you. And, and these are the things uh, that is contributing to a lot of, um, you know, dissatisfaction uh, within couple. And that is why, like I, I mentioned it again, according to the stats in the papers, the high rise of prostitution on on the roads here in Suva 
and the clientele, I mean, these clients, they are not single men. They are married men. And these are married men that have wives at home, that have children at home, and not married men that comes from the plantation. They are married men that comes from high office. They are married men that can think for themselves. They are married men that have, you know, IQ level and mentality to even tell them that what I'm doing is wrong. But because of that discontent, because of that, you know, dissatisfaction, or for whatever reason, then that is happening. It may be happening in the obvious that they come and pick up girls, but even in the relationship uh, as we have at home for those, uh, for us who are church goers. And, and I know, like within the church that we uh, look after, uh, I address this during our leaders uh, training, which is every Monday, for those of you who belong to the same church as we do, I always bring the family matters up every Monday to speak on it. Because I always feel the church is not there to save us. You are there to do something to save your marriage. You don't just come and hide in the church and expect the church to save your marriage. No, you need to. Because even within the blanket of the church, you still have extramarital affairs happening within the church. So that is why I want to bring you to this forum, as we have only five minutes left, uh, to be you know, a provoking idea to you, to have it at the back of your mind. If your relationship is good, then congratulations. If your relationship is otherwise is on rocky you know, ground, then you need to find out why. Why is it on rocky ground? And talk about it on how to fix it and, and stop doing what you're doing when it becomes ICK moments for your partner. And amazing, I mean, not amazing, I, I, you know, it was really, for me, hilarious just to read some of the ICK moments or the earth moments. Uh, it's like this woman says, you know, everything about my, my partner is good. Every, my family loves him. My, you know, my friends, they love him. And he's good looking, he's got everything that every, anybody ever wanted. But what puts me off, every time we have our meal, he's blowing his nose. And uh, every time uh, that we go uh, and we're standing in front of everybody, he's blowing his nose. And sometimes, like for me, every now and then I'm dabbing all these things. It may be irritable to somebody. But those are the little moments. And sometimes you grind your teeth. I mean, it's about you. It's about you. And you feel comfortable with it. But you don't know. It becomes the ICK moments for your partner. Or you're burping in the wrong moment and you're burping at the wrong time. And all those things, like it can be one of those things that it doesn't matter, but reading the article yesterday, then it really, you know, make me realize, well, these are the things that are unspoken of. We don't want to talk about it. Very little, very minute, and I would say, you know, like not even there, um, but they contribute to marriage separation, they contribute to dissatisfaction in marriage, and they may be considered little, but then those little things matters. Uh, to a marriage that I want to bring to the forum today. And, and uh, time those uh, little things you don't recognize when uh, you two first met. It was yeah. there all along, eh? But as you move on, uh, years, five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty years, all those things, uh, they become uh, a mountain to you. That means uh, your level of uh, uh, unity, togetherness, uh, but picture. sometimes it wasn't there. Like we, we, yeah. we, sometimes it yeah. was not there. And sometimes it was there, but... You know. See, love blinded us. When we love somebody, every negative, everything that is uh, uh, not right with everyone... In the beginning, In eh? the beginning. Yeah. It, because it, you can't stay blind all the time, eh? Yeah, but <laughs> as you move along, uh, all these things becomes very irritating. Yeah. And because the patient is gone, the love is gone, uh, as you said, uh, we are only attached because of uh, the family, the children, the responsibility. Yeah. But the love is no longer there. The holding of hands. That's why the, the speaking of, uh, when you're content, you, you speak good things. Because nobody is perfect. Nobody is 100%. So when you continue to speak good and try to be good all the time, it, it, a level of or snub those uh, irritating things that yeah. are... Uh, some of us we are not uh, we are not patient enough to uh, to uh, uh, to accept things are happening with our children. Yeah. We speak to our children and our children is not following, even though your children is even better than you. Mm. But because uh, we don't have that uh, the unity, the bonding. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, attack. It's not only in America. It's uh, right across. Um, yeah, whatever that we are talking about now, it's not uh, um, to, uh, to, not to a nation. condition to a nation. It's to like globally. globally yeah? Yeah. Because every relationship, it's like every human, yeah. 
globally, regardless of the country that they live in. Eh? I, I was reading, you know, the climate change. Even the climate change contribute to all these things. This, this is a change of environment, the change of mood. Eh? What we used to enjoy before, it's becoming. You no, know, this, this is a changing thing going, yeah. going on. Eh? Yeah. So, when when you brought up or when we br when we bring it up, eh, in churches, in leaders training, yeah. or in the village, uh, uh, to run all these things. When we when we put it on the table, then it's good to talk about it. Yeah. And then we we are reminded, oh, kero sa office ngamay na muna kero ati kubukin na kero ati kubukin kero sa bilomani yung ko sa pagasa balam tuko na ilawlo ko pag kero sa we can't stand one another. Yeah, yeah, I think moving forward, uh, it's not the matter of can't stand one another. Uh, we can generally say that we can't stand one another, but we need to ask ourselves, what can you stand? You know, what can you take? And why do you say that you can't stand one another? And that takes us back to the ICK moments. You know, um, there are certain things, like you as a spouse, or you as a husband or a wife, you should know what your husband like. And as a husband, you should know what your wife like. You know, sometimes you have your conversation, no, I don't like when you do, it, when you do that. Oh, I don't like it when you say that because that's the closest relationship that you can ever have. Closest relationship, a husband and a wife. You can be yourself, uh, you can be your worst moment, and you can be your goodest moment. Whatever moment that you live in your life, I would say that you know, a marriage is so special that it's created by God that you can be yourself. Yeah, yeah you can be yourself. You I mean, I can be my very worst to him, yeah. and I can be my very best to him. I can do, you know, I can say. <laughs> And if I don't want to talk to him, I don't want to talk to him, I'll turn the other way, and he can be talking to the wall. Or if he's near driving, I'll look the other way, and he'll be talking, it's like he's not there. Yeah. Uh, you know, those moments. And, uh, and you, you cannot do that to anybody else, no, but no. you can only do it to your yeah. partner. Because, and if you minus your partner from the equation, well, yeah. you're very well out, because who are you to do it to? You can do it to your children, you so can do it to your that's, grandchildren. That's why the yeah. marriage, uh, marriage relationship is very special, because yeah. as you said, you can be yourself. Yeah, you can be yourself. And sometimes it's irritating, you know? It's just irritating. Well, with that said, now that you know you can be each other, you know, you can be whatever you are to each other. So try and know and remember what works and what doesn't work. You know, there are moments of your life, you know, it's irritable to your partner and you know what's irritable to you. And try and be mature enough and be serious when you discuss these issues, remember them. Eh, remember them and don't do them. Don't do it. But on the river, can the Naturanga, Lemon, we came in the Turan, the Lemon Ranga, Sotan, we can the Marama, Lemon and Mondaranga Ranga. In the Lapa and Ivango, can the Samuel of Mandana, Nada Vanda Vindin Dinatitaka, Nada Vanda Viva Sekita, the Voseke, Voseke, Ranga, KV, Walike, Vivalike. Yeah, when the Kilat was Sola Kaipo, the Kabachiko, and most of the Kukin and I will work in Mu. And a small people to the Kukin Samu, a really local. Look at the Kabachiko of Vitali, or quite to the Kukin Samu. So, Sola Kalala Maya, if I want a Sombe Kanangona, so we all know I can speak it out. No, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like that. You know, you make me look stupid. Or say, Kibaka is so weak, and the Sibir Ron in the Vosa, but in the Vosa and the Lovado. And uh, you can say it out, and then you keep it within you. You can send them a marway to him, Mosina Lomo, or Tangi, Koyani, Dolo Kaya Walla, Sararanga, Moloko Valley, Sararanga, Molako. But there's so much I think there's no forum. You can say it out, but it's eating you alive inside. And uh, for you, um, you know, husbands who are listening uh, today, uh, try and, uh, and, you know, be loyal to your, your wives and know what works and know what makes them happy. Uh, especially so if you have your wife just staying at home, while, uh, you know, to make it work for you. And uh, you come home, you still bring your friends, you still socialize with your friends, you still go out with your friends, and you have uh, your wife at home, you know, um, just overloaded and overwhelmed with the responsibility in looking after the children, looking after the house, preparing your meals on your moments of in and out, and jumping at the call, you know, whenever you say, can you do that, can you do that, can you take that, can you pick that, can you pack that, uh, they become like a, a slave or an errand girl uh, in your house other than the wife that they're supposed to be. And sometimes we do it because you know, like back to what I said, you can be yourself to them. Nobody else knows your, you know, whatever that you do apart from your wife. You can be your good moments, your bad moments, your screaming moments, shouting moments, your swearing moments, and all those kind of moments. And no one else you do it to but to your wife. And without you realizing, uh, it's adding up stress, it's uh, taking its toll, 
uh, imagine for years of your marriage and the same treatment that they get, uh, you think that's going to help them? No, it will not because they don't have any other, play, uh, any other place or platform to vent out whatever that they're going through. If they go to their friends, do, you know, does she really hang out with her friends? Uh, to be able to vent out, to say it out. I mean, don't know, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I don't And why I'm bringing it to the table, because sometimes we have a lot of plans for our family. And, and most of the times, uh, we don't really work on our relationship. And most of the times, we bring hurt uh, to our relationship because we are so selfish. You are selfish uh, in wanting other women to be attracted to you. You are selfish in getting them to like you for what? For what reason? Yeah, for what reason? Why are you getting them to like you? For, ask yourself, for what reason? The women in your office, for what reason? What reason do you want them to like you? If they respect you uh, as a worker, if they respect you uh, as a supervisor, if they respect you as a manager, uh, then there is a line that they, you know, demarcated. That's the area only that they have and the area that they should have uh, to describe the relationship that you have. And not just getting them, you know, winning them uh, to like you for, for no reason at all. Because you are not content with what your family is offering. You want to be the main boy uh, to everybody, you know, out there. Uh, to be the person. Uh, for what? For what reason? What do you get? And these people that you're trying to impress, they already, they have their families. They have their life. Yeah, you can have them maybe in the window of 30 minutes. Or maybe in the window of one hour in a week. Or maybe in a window of as and when you meet them, but they have their lives. They have their families. Uh, they have their responsibilities. And the people that you're trying to please, the people that you're trying to uh, win over for no reason, uh, have their own lives to go to. And by doing that, and you get carried away to, uh, you know, to attract them or entice them or ranga ranga to them. The very people that you're doing that to and the things that you are doing, you lose out on the very family that you have without you knowing. Why are you doing that? Because you, ha you know you have a stable family here. You have a good wife that looks after everything. You don't need to worry. And it gives you the opportunity, your opportunity, bad opportunity, uh, for you to do whatever you want to do. And you want to take best of both worlds. And I think that it's very unfair to do that. And if you're a man doing that, I think you should stop. Uh, because if you continue to do, and then the very minute you turn around, then the very family you're relying on, they're all gone. And they'll tell you, good luck. Look after yourself now. With the very thing that you're trying to go and uh, entice other people, then bring them to come and look after you. And that goes for, to men and women who are doing what I'm sharing today. So be content with your family. Be happy with what God has given you. And there are little irk moments. Work through that. Tell them. I don't like it when you do that. Can you stop doing that? Can you stop grinding your teeth, please? And to them, because it's like a normal way. Or to grind the teeth. Or to have a rather common donor car. A normal thing. But they are humans. But tell them. Don't be angry or don't, you know, resent them without telling them. Tell them. Stop doing that. It's irritating. Or stop doing that. It's irritating. Sometimes I do things. Maybe it irritates me because he doesn't tell me. And then I'll tell him, is it, are you okay with this? Oh, I mean, sorry, I always do this. Because I do irritating things. And uh, because I'm a chatter, I'm a talker, I can say irritating things, and I address irritating things. And if I do irritable things, I will say it as well, and I'll be quick to say apology, and I'll work on it. So making a marriage work, it's a uh, communication. Speak to each other, talk to one another, more so for December. It's not a way to go. Love your wife, love your husband, tell them the truth, hold their hands, tell them which to go. And if they continue to do what they continue to do, and they know fully well it hurts you, then you need to tell them and challenge them. Why you continuously do the very thing that hurts me, the very thing that makes me sad, and you continuously do that. So don't lie to tell me that you love me because you continuously do the very thing that hurts me. So talk about it, discuss, and be a man and be a woman enough to speak to each other face to face and talk about these issues. Don't wait for you to go separate ways and divorce. Don't wait for the high court to do your ruling or to define your moments of your family. You fix it now. Every marriage is fixable. I've been reading the papers this week. 
in Idaho, there is uh, an emphasis. I don't know, maybe it's a week, the violence is a week. Uh, a lot of women are sharing, women pastors and the women uh, you know, in leadership, they're sharing about this abuse. Uh, being, you know, uh, women that are living through domestic abuse. So, and they were offering help. The Salvation Army, there was a family saved by the Salvation Army on how they just called out the woman, you know, kept on being beaten up, even up to her death, nearly dying. And they, you know, called for help. Salvation Army took them on. And this whole week has been a coverage of stories of uh, saving the lives of the women that are going through abusive relationship or saving the women and their children uh, from abusive husbands and father. And it has been the, you know, the core of this week. And we would like to round up with that. If you know that you're going through all this abusive relationship, look, don't wait until it takes your life. Don't wait until it's fatal. Uh, look for help. It can be to the church that you belong to. It can be to organization like a big uh, uh, put up in the papers, the Salvation Army, the Lifeline Corps. Uh, there are facilities that are there to help you. Don't be quiet and wallow in until you die. Stand up, be counted, and look for help uh, to keep you alive and also keep your family alive. Well, that's it from the family table talk that I want to round up today. I'll give this moment to uh, um, Mr. Atuvula Ono to say the closing moments before we finish this program. And we'll see you again next Saturday at 7.30. Well, yeah. marriage is a, a partnership. Yeah. It takes two person. If it fails, both of them fails. Yeah. We can't blame one another. And because we, if we continue to blame one another, it will can't work. So we encourage those of you that have been calling uh, yeah. be before normally women calls. Right. But now uh, men are also calling uh, of uh, the abusive relationship. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, men used to abuse the wife, but you, boy, uh, today women too are abusing their husband. So it, it's there, it's workable. Uh, we will finish with what the Bible says. Eh? If God does not build the house, then we will work in vain. If God does not watch the city, then we'll watch in vain. Yeah. So we encourage you until next week on our family, ta family table talk. May you have a family blessed weekend yes. this week. Thanks. Thank you a lot for today. Brief on the program of Breath of the Living God. Allow the lives of our care, Father, to be encouraged. And thank you, Father, for Tangas Mao. Thank you for uh, Tangas Trevedi. A family is an epitome of God's love towards mankind. God designed us to live in families, and the Bible reveals that family relationships are important to Him. But as a believer, do you feel that you are still struggling? Maybe you are still struggling with your relationship. Struggling with your finances? Struggling at work? With your social life? Or with your spiritual life? We invite you to join us on our family table talk every Saturday at 7.30 a.m. on my TV. Or catch us on our Facebook page. Not sure your child will sleep, Kim Billiton is here to serve you. Girls will be billeted at Super Methodist Primary School, boys at NSE Primary School. We are grateful for these two schools for giving us these questions. Children's accommodation will have run the clock supervision with interchanging rosters of six groups. Take back memories with you. Together they will learn independence, self-reliance and respect for others. We will give all children a sense of responsibility within the safe environment by encouraging them to try new adventures. Your children's safety and security is our top priority. We will make it a home away from home. There is a youth symposium happening this December. Not sure of the movement of the youth during the week, there will be shuttles provided from the billeting area to the Vodafone area. We have partnered with Rewanga Buses, Sakrin Buses, and So Buses Limited. To provide these services, bus monitors will be on each bus to supervise the youth's movements to and from the bank. With the many incidents happening around our country, we have dedicated our time to see the route to the safety of the children attending this event. A big winner of value to the bus companies for their support and assistance. Parents and guardians, send your children to these events. We are ready for them.
2023 goal.